Get your chip when you get your COVID vaccination. They want to alter us. They're sharing false rumors and lies about COVID-19 vaccines. This is a final enslavement. And they have influence because they're religious leaders. I look at anti-vaccine content all day, every day. My name is Kalina Koltai. So these figureheads who have a large platform, ties, are often respected. And they also have the cultural competency to understand what is important, what are the values, what is necessary to make that information powerful and resonate. It's a minority spreading these false messages. Most leaders in every faith are trying to do the opposite. The vaccine is a gift of hope. But when religious leaders spread wrong information about vaccines, it can be powerful. In India, this man suggests the vaccine is an international conspiracy to feed cow's blood to Hindus. But there's no cow's blood in COVID-19 vaccines. A Greek Orthodox bishop says slaughtered fetuses are used to make vaccines. But this emotive language is extremely misleading. There were two fetuses aborted in the 1960s that are used to produce a cell line that's still used today in the process of making deactivated virus that goes into the vaccine. But that does not mean that they're taking aborted babies and putting it in your vaccines. In Israel, a rabbi claims the vaccine will make you gay, which is nonsensical. All those claiming to be saved. And in the US, some evangelical Christians are debating whether vaccines are the mark of the beast a sign of the devil and the end of times. I think it's difficult for social media companies to uh, figure out where is the appropriate moderation limit when it comes to religious content. Even when negative messages aren't necessarily false, they can have a big impact. Sitting in London, I received this message from a friend in Nigeria. But it came from Zambia, where the speaker, Nevers Mumba, is a politician and a former televangelist. Zambia must not inject any vaccine in any Zambian body before strenuous verification. There's a danger when someone as influential as you spreads a message like this publicly, they undermine confidence in the vaccine. Why did you feel the need to make this statement publicly? I think it's my moral obligation as a leader uh, to make that public because it puts our authorities um, on alert to realize that we are not just people who receive anything that comes to us, but all we are saying to our people, make sure it is safe. Is pre-regulation by the WHO that isn't enough by your standards? No, not at all, not at all. When Pfizer hit London, London had to do its own verifications and ensure that they are satisfied. Even if the intent of the person who's posting it is not necessarily to spread misinformation, it can be interpreted as a message to not vaccinate. Dr. Teddy Andrew Mulenga challenged Nevers Mumba publicly. I asked him why. For us here, pastors, they have huge followings. And whatever they say is taken as gospel truth. He believes that Zambia, like other countries have done, should trust the WHO's rigorous pre-regulation to get the vaccine quickly. I am a doctor, but there are more people listening to him. Okay. It's crucial that religious leaders get vaccine messaging right. Halal is very important for Muslim. In 2018, the highest Muslim clerical council in Indonesia said a measles and rubella vaccine wasn't halal. Uh, MUI then issued a fatwa that uh, this, even it is not halal, but it still can be used. But that mixed message meant many parents refused to vaccinate their children. Now, with the coronavirus, they want to do things differently. They put out a fatwa saying the COVID-19 vaccine from Sinovac is halal before the rollout in Indonesia began. I think it's incredibly important for religious leaders to spread accurate and up-to-date information about vaccines and making sure that that information that they're spreading is relevant to their congregations. Because a delay in vaccinating means more lives lost. We need the vaccine. We need people to buy in. 